yung crime development sa Pilipinas, parang lalala ito eh. Ganito, mm-hmm. hindi nila inaalagaan yung may hira. Puro corruption lang ang inaatupag ng gobyerno. Parang naawa ako sa Pilipino actually. Pero mm-hmm. I have to save myself and my children away from that. Hey guys, you're in a nutshell with me, Ina. Alam nyo, isa sa mga pinakamadalas kong naririnig na dahilan kung bakit umaalis yung mga kababayan natin sa Pilipinas ay dahil sa frustrations sa sistema ng gobyerno sa Pilipinas. Um, frustrations sa gobyerno, sa mga politiko natin, sa pag-address ng uh, krimen, kahirapan. Kumbaga, hindi nila masikmura, ano? Anyway, yan din po ang uh, kwento ng ating kakausapin ngayon. She was a scientist, a published scientist in the Philippines, and she decided to leave and move to Canada dahil, I don't know, gusto niya ng uh, mas magandang environment, kumbaga. O kaya yan po ang ating pag-uusapan. O kakwentuhan si Ma'am, o si Gilda Loya Haveliana. Sabi ko nga, hindi ko na ima, Ma'am. Gilda na lang dahil nasa Canada tayo, no? Okay. Hilda, actually. Ina. Oh, Hilda. Hilda, okay. yeah. yeah. I see. Thank you so yeah. much, Hilda. I'm so happy and excited to discuss yung uh, story mo dito sa Canada. Okay. O sige, let's get right to it. Si Hilda, interestingly, no scientist. Wow, she was a scientist, PhD scientist back in the Philippines, a published scientist. Hilda, for those who might not be aware, ano ba ibig sabihin kung published scientist ka? Yeah, in published scientist, that means that I have uh, written publications that were accepted as articles, scientific articles by international journals. Oh, this, uh, these scientific articles are composed of the findings of my researches and my experiments resulting from experiments. Uh, because they are internationally refereed, that means that international critics all over the world have uh, studied and have analyzed my experiments from the articles that I wrote. Grabe, no? Oh, wow. It's so impressive. Okay. And she worked for an international research research organization back in the Philippines. Nagturo rin po siya sa University of the Philippines. And her husband also is a research technician. Parang ganyan, di ba? So basically, you guys are really intellects. Kumbaga. <laughs> Sayang naman, some would say, you know, Sayang naman yung katalinuhan ninyong mag-asawa and you left the Philippines. Um, why? Why? Uh, we left the... Mahabang story, but actually, <laughs> <laughs> the desire really in me to try out and explore different experiences in life. Mm. Nung pagkabata ako pa. Ah, yeah. okay. Oo. Talagang, uh, there is always a drive in me to... Uh, to search for challenges and explore different environments. But uh, as I was uh, driving in my career in the Philippines, I noticed that the Philippines is no longer a good environment for my growing children. Yeah. We have four children. And mahabang storya din yan. During the progress of my career as a, as a scientist or as a researcher, um i was i was given the opportunity to be granted by a scholarship by the australian government oh yeah wow that is to take the phd and that was during the time that i was still employed by the international organization i work for Mm -hmm. in the philippines now when i went there to study this phd like i said like Wow. Oh, naka, na, you were exposed to that different ano, mm-hmm. Yes. There is so much. I said to myself, my gosh, forgive me <laughs> for saying that. <laughs> there is very much difference that the Filipinos are missing out. The quality of life, the way everything is processed, the way everything goes, like it's very organized and there's quality of life. So at that time, when I was doing my PhD in Australia, uh, that time was really like, okay, if I finish this, 
I want to go out of the Philippines because I saw the difference how the government worked mm -hmm. and how the systems everywhere work. Walang palakasan, walang mga lagayan, mm -hmm. walang, you know, walang sipsipan, you know, as far as I'm concerned, wala akong na-notice na ganon. Mm -hmm. Pero, may konting problema. Siyempre, hindi, wala namang perfect. Na, mm -hmm. perfect na environment or perfect na country especially that you are going to another culture right yeah meron ding mga konting discrimination yeah oh syempre in any country meron naman yang uh, yeah kanya-kanyang mga problema okay so you got your phd in australia so why not australia why did you also consider moving to australia that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. After after I went I've, after I completed my PhD, I was required by the Australian government and the Philippine government to go back to the Philippines mm -hmm. to contribute to the economic development of the country. Oh wow! In exchange for the Which scholarship. I didn't do. <laughs> Kasi ano yun eh, yung scholarship ko is like government to government, parang uh, parang developmental program aid ng Australian government sa Philippines. But the only thing why why I was prevented was because of the five years uh, required by the Australian government and the Philippine government because I signed off for that. After three years of working or two years, I can't remember exactly how many years, I told my husband like, we have to do something. I want to go out. <laughs> like, but so Australia is out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, Canada and New Zealand were open at the time. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. So I applied to both, but I chose Canada because I may mga sister, may sister ako and brother sa United States. Okay. Malapit, malapit. Malapit. So sabi ko sa pagtanda namin, magbibisitahan na lang kami and Kung hindi ako successful or hindi kami successful sa Canada, kasi I really don't know, yeah. right? Kung hindi kami successful sa Canada, madaling lumipat din sa kapatid ko kasi I was petitioned too by my brother. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Sige, before we move on to what you guys ended up doing in Canada, okay lang po ba? Can you expound a little bit on uh, yung sinasabi po ninyo kanina that the environment in the Philippines that you wanted to take your children away from. Kung baga, ano okay. ba yung environment na na-observe mo na parang atat na atat na kayo agad umalis eh, no? Matapos niyo makita yung sistema sa ibang bansa. Ano po ang, ba yun? Ang, yeah. Ang unang-una yung frustrations ko sa workplace. Okay. Uh, palakasan, parang ang hirap umasenso. Kahit mm. may PhD na ako. Parang when I returned, parang ang hirap nilang ma-accept na yung isang simpleng Hilda lang na assistant ay eh nagkaroon ng PhD agad na sapawan pa yung iba. Oh my God. Parang nagkaroon ng resistance. Parang na-feel ko yon Ewan ko kung mali yung perspectives ko or what. Pero yung pag-asenso ko, talagang pinupol nila. Some people are saying, bigyan nyo na ng magandang position si Hilda sa management or whatever kasi maganda na yung training. Some people who are influential enough pull you down. Ay, si parang office yeah. politics din, ano? Yung mga ganyan. Yeah. Palakasan, yun ang kinasama din ng loob ko. Tapos, another in terms of the Philippine environment and the government, Yung, yung nakikita ko talaga yung government sa Pilipinas, wala eh, walang pupuntahan eh. Under kay Ramos kami dumating noon, although siya, siguro kung i-compare kay Duterte or whatever, <laughs> maganda-ganda ng konti yung kay Ramos. Pero at least, nakikita ko pa rin yung lagayan, mag apply ka sa ganito, sa ganyan, sa mga government agencies, may lagay dapat, may... Mm, Tapos may mga, ang, ang dami lang, ang dami lang scams na naiisip ng Pilipino. Oh. Just to get even. Pagkatapos yung poverty na walang katapusan, imagine, in, wala na ata akong nakitang pag-asenso sa, in terms of economic status ng mga class E ba yun? Basta yung mga oh. the poorest of the poor. Oh. Eh, hindi sa anti-poor ako, pero... 
every time na lumabas ako sa kalye, parang hindi ko masikmura na yung 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 nagpupulot ng basura para makakain lang yung mga bata, ang daming beggars pagkatapos yun na compare ko sa Austra sa Australia, wala din mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kasi yung government programs nila sa Australia Talagang nakatutok sa social development, may mga benefits. Katulad din dito sa Canada, may mga social development benefits. Talagang ang laki ng pagkakaiba. So sabi ko, yung, yung, yung crime development sa Pilipinas, parang lalala ito eh. Kapag ganito, ganito mm -hmm. hindi nila inaalagaan yung may hirap. Puro corruption lang ang inaatupag ng gobyerno. Parang naawa ako sa Pilipino actually. Pero mm -hmm. I have to save myself and my children away from that. Sa Manila ko binabalak pag-arali ng higher education yung mga anak ko. But, ang daming crimes. I-expose mm -hmm. ko ba yung mga anak ko doon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eh, masyado kong centered sa family. Parang hindi ko kaya. Tapos so sabi ko, umalis na tayo, umalis na tayo, sabi ko sa husband ko. Which we did after two years or three years of staying or of working kahit kailangan pa akong mag-work doon sa organization ko. Nag-apply kami sa Canada. Yung asawa ko nag-resign. Okay. Ako, kasi hin natatakot ako noon eh. Kasi Canada, okay, kahit exposed kami sa Australia, pero it's a different system. Yes. Baka hindi tayo successful doon. So nag-apply ako for my sabbatical leave for one year. Oh, okay, okay. So when when we went to to Canada on sabbatical leave ako for the first year, pero yung husband ko nagresign na dum sa organization namin. And mind you, that was before 9/11 when we applied. They were not oh. that strict. So uh, after applying for uh, highly skilled independent immigration, kasi kami eh, yung point system. Mm -hmm. Four months pa lang kami nag-submit nag ng application namin. We were given the visa as landed immigrant. PR agad yung binigay sa amin. So I was really like, oh my gosh! <laughs> Here it goes! May excitement and may takot ng konti. Bringing, bringing Hold on, okay. How was that? Did you still finish your required years of uh, work pa sa Philippines? Did you go back after your sabbatical leave to finish your work? As of no. Uy, naku, yeah. hindi ka Kaya, mahamak. And then, nag-resign ako after the sabbatical leave. Kasi oh, entitled okay. ako to have the sabbatical leave. So, nag-resign ako oh, while okay. I was here in Canada. After the first year, after the, that one year of sabbatical leave, nag-resign ako no, sa okay. organization. Oh, so, okay. hindi ko nakuha yung full uh, retirement benefits from the organization kasi binawasan nila dahil hindi ako nakakomplete nung, yes. nung return service. That's what I was asking about. I see. Okay. Yeah. Pero kumbaga, sige, sa inyo na yan. That's, I guess, yun yung mindset mo. No, no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. I so, see. Okay. Well, now, you're in Canada. Ang uh, nakwento po sa akin ni Hilda, um, your scientists back home, but you ended up, you and your husband ended up, I think, or your husband, paano ba, ended up doing some you know, the odd jobs at first. What did you end up doing here? Yeah, at the we, beginning, oh. yeah, we, we struggled uh, kasi, although pagdating mo talagang taas-taas ng pick, ano, excitement, oh. very new, like, and we came here during snow time, you know, no. that was March, mid-March. So may snow pa yon like so we were like, oh snow <laughs> <laughs> and then during that first week nung inaayos na namin yung aming jet lag doon na nag -go, go down like oh my gosh okay my husband i didn't know that he went out or he has been going out of the home we rented uh looking for a job so on the third day he went he he came to me and said i have a job now yes. yeah <laughs> maybe third day like the jet lag adjustment pa siya talagang kasi nagresign na siya <laughs> yeah yeah okay so, so he has to move on as a dishwasher wow 
Yeah. Pumasok siya sa isang restaurant, nag-apply siya. Pumasok siya sa restaurant, Greek restaurant. As he asked for for a job. And then the uh, owner of the restaurant, okay, we have someone who is leaving tonight to do dishwashing. Can you do dishwashing? And then my husband said, yes. So Ooh. he did that. Okay, okay. Um, and then uh, he, the, the Greek owner was so good recognizing okay. the, my husband's uh, kasitagan that he said, can I, do you want me to, to train you to be a cook? Okay. Wow. The, of course, sabi mm -hmm. ng husband ko. Because actually, mahilig sa pagluluto tong asawa oh, ko. Oh, eh. okay. Yeah. So, tinrain siya, and then, naging cook siya. Okay. Yeah, after two weeks ata, nag nagkukuk na siya. Madali siyang matuto eh. And then, ako naman at the time, wala ako makuhang trabaho. Mm, ako, okay. Reason is when I my my uh, my youngest daughter was four years old at the time, so kailangan pa siya sa bahay with a babysitter or with myself to take okay. care of her. And then my three other children, uh, the two are were in high school at the time, and then the third was in elementary. Yung tatlo nasa school environment na. I said, I have to understand the environment they're in. Kasi iba yung educational environment natin, uh -oh. di ba? Sabi ko, mag-apply ako as volunteer. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, to assist children, something like that, in their uh, studies or whatever. So what I did, I brought my four-year-old child with me, and then nag-volunteer nag ako to help out. So, ang um, binigay ko, uh, yeah, binigyan ako ng chance nung principal kasi nakita niya yung aking, sinabi ko sa kanya yung aking educational attainment. Yun, binigyan ako ng, ng what do you call this, students, high school students na may learning disabilities. Oh, wow, okay. One-on-one -on -one yun. So, may mga dyslexia, may mga depression, may mga anxiety, may mga... Uh, family problems na they can't cope they couldn't cope in a regular classroom setting so yeah. dapat one on one so ginawa ko yun wow at ma'am ma uh, sorry Hilda so you weren't required to have some sort of certificate or something uh, no it, it was just no it was just they call it um I, I didn't have the position at that time yet. I was mm -hmm. just volunteering to help out with the kids. Oh, okay. So they entrusted me with that. After about two weeks, uh, I was accepted as a higher class years. Higher oh, okay. Like a school or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they gave me a chance. And then the, the principal said, like, I can recommend you to get a, a, a real job for this kind of work. Sabi ng principal, ha? sabi ko, oh, okay, why not? <laughs> I, I enjoyed it anyway, but it was very stressful. They wow. call it teaching, uh, teaching para professional, resource para professional. Oh. So I work as a, in a resource department of the high schools, uh, giving assistance to, one-on-one -on -one assistance to those kinds of children with special needs. Oh, okay. Like, and you yeah. lasted there? Do na kayo forever, you know? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so hindi pa ako citizen at that time. Pero at oh, yeah. that time, hindi ako tumitigil ng ka-apply. Hindi ako okay. nag-settle doon kasi alam ko na this will not be my job forever. Mm -hmm. One is although I like the work because of the, you know, emotional fulfillment you get in helping out children. Uh, sabi ko I can do more than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the PhD I have, hindi naman sa pagmamayabang, with the PhD I have, the training I had, experiences I have, there are, there's just a lot of transferable skills that I have. Perfect. Oh. And I said like, so I kept on applying. I applied for a federal government job. Oh. was really in my mind. Kasi if, if I will look for a scientist job, it should be the government because doon lang merong Maraming opportunities. So I said to myself, okay, 
I have to widen the possibilities for myself. I have a lot of skills transferable and I am open to not doing a scientist job anymore. Okay. But as long as my heart goes into that scientist kind of work, like I can conceptualize, I can write, I can analyze data, I can do this and that, I can write, I know that I can do something a lot. So what I, I did was during the time that I wasn't assisted citizen yet, I kept on applying for a government job. Mm -hmm. Jobs.gc.ca. Job Remember bank. that. Job bank. The job bank yeah. na ngayon. Okay. Yeah. Doon ako lagi nagpupunta. So what I did was kahit anong position, basta maipasok ko lang yung pa ako sa federal government, that's fine with me. And I was invited to take exams, public, mm -hmm. uh, those jobs that are open to public only, right? Mm -hmm. So I uh, took the exams, nagkaroon ako ng mga ng inclusion sa eligibility list. They usually form this pool, mm -hmm. but yung mga non-citizen, usually nasa huli yan. Binibigyan uh -huh. nila ng priority yung mga citizen first, you know. So in other words, parang practice na rin sa akin, which is madali. Ina, I advise you and the rest to do that. Okay. Kasi logic, math, English, writing, napakadali. Oh, okay. Kayang-kaya okay. nyo. Kayang-kaya mm -hmm. ng maraming Pilipino yon. Ma nice. Maipasa nyo lang yon. Mailagay kayo sa interview list. Tapos kung mapasa nyo yung interview, ando na kayo sa eligibility list. Tatawagin na kayo for a job. So, hindi pa ako nakaka hindi pa ako na-offera ng job at the time kasi hindi ako citizen nasa medyo dulong lista pa ako. But when I became a citizen on the third year kasi at the time third year pwede ka nang mag-apply eh. Okay. Yeah. Ang dali ko nang natangga. Oh, kasi, all right. Yes. Okay. Kasi citizen na ako tapos What job did you get? Administrative assistant. I yes, see. So administration. So doon pa rin, maganda pa rin yung experiences ko. Nung nabigyan ako ng indeterminate position, that means permanent position agad. So you ended up, uh, doon na kayo. It, 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 was that your last stop? Not yet. Sa so work? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 did nag ano ko no for for about 5 years or 4 years I was working like that and then miski meron na akong job apply pa rin ako ng apply kasi may international may internal competition process okay. and over federal government so kapag may internal competition and gusto ko yung description ng job nag apply ako and this one I got I got this when um when I found a job na related sa scientific research pero more profound kasi it it has uh, relation to the economic development mm. hindi katulad ng dati kong job sa Philippines na nasa four world laboratories lang ako gumagawa ng basic research ganyan pero this time uh, ang, ang tawag doon is Inter intellectual property commercialization officer okay sa agriculture canada so sabi ko na, wow, this is the most, this is the dream job I, I have been wanting. Yeah. And I retired from that job. I see. You, you, basically, yes. you ended up in a field very much related to what you used to do back home. You didn't give up ano, until you found that. Uh, your husband pala, sorry, I forgot. So what did he end up doing dun sa restaurant from uh, being a cook? Uh, he stayed as a cook for many years. And then here, nung na-relocate kami sa Nova Scotia, tinanggap ko yung relocation because of that job, commercialization officer. Okay. Which is a six-figure dollar salary. I'm sorry if I have to say oh, wow. this. Yes, when I retired. In, in 20 years ago, that was really big, huh? Kasi yes. I mean, about 15 years ago, when you, at the time you got it, no? Yeah, so I was really like, God given, everything is God given. But wow. my my husband was just able to find uh, like contractual jobs, but okay. in a research setting too. So, okay, so now um, your children, naman, because that was your main reason for moving. Oh. Uh, fast forward a little bit, na lang tayo, mama. You're proud 
to uh, see that your children, I think one is a doctor, one is, uh, can, you, can you share with us, ano na po ang, uh, ang ginagawa po nila ngayon? Yung panganay ko, when we moved here to, to Nova Scotia, she said like, Mama, I want to go to the United States and try it out there. Parang, mm -hmm. Katulad po siguro, gusto nang <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> gusto mag-explore. Retirement income security analyst. Okay. Yeah. Tapos And yung then, second, uh, uh, she's, a, she's a pediatrician right now. And then yung pangatlo, she, he's a, a data analyst. Yung bunso, she's a registered nurse. Obviously, you're very happy with how things turned out for you and your family. You know, ang re um, for those who might say, Okay, Hilda na. Swerte si Hilda kasi nung dumating siya dito, hindi pa ganun nakahirap ang buhay sa Canada. Yan. Because that's a, that's a common, you know, comment. Uh, now, mahirap na daw po ngayon ng buhay din sa Canada. Um, it's more competitive. Um, there's also crime, more crime now compared to, let's say, two decades ago from when you arrived. Ikaw, what do you uh, say to those who might be... I completely, I completely disagree with that. Kasi okay, nung, okay, okay. Yes, nung dumating kami, ang hirap din makakita ng trabaho ng mga baguhan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hinahanapan nga ng, ano, ng uh, Canadian experience, right? Mm -hmm. Mahirap. Kaya ako, siguro four months pa ako nag-stay nag sa bahay. Naghihintay magkaroon ng offers. And Nakasend ako ng mga, siguro mga 300 resumes only to get in ano interviews tapos marami na rin crime rates doon malakas na rin ang crime rates no so we need kami next start eh. ano ko lang sa mga Pilipino ngayon magkaroon man kayo ng uh, blue collar jobs o kay titigil dapat buo yung loob nyo na may magagawa pa kayong mas hihigit doon oh. tapos kung kung magkaroon ka ng depression or ng anxiety during the time that you're settling Go beyond the barriers. Mm -hmm. Tignan mo yung pwedeng mangyari after the mountain of barriers. Mm -hmm. Ano ba yung goal mo pumunta ka dito? Is it for yourself or for your children? Doon pa lang naliwanagan ako. No, it's for my children. It's for our children. That's why it's no longer for me. Kasi na-experience ko na what I liked. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry we have to cut this interview na medyo napahaba nga tayo dami kasi mga gandang kwento ni uh, Hilda but thank you so much um, for sharing your story with us sana I'm sure marami po nga may inspire at maliliwanagan <laughs> sa uh, iyong uh, mga naikwento oh, go. may isa pa akong ano, reminder sa Filipinos yes. don't forget your faith yeah oo nga he saved us Mm -hmm. He gave us the grace. He gave everything. Yes, trust his plan. Good uh, point to uh, end this conversation. Again, thank you so much, Hilda, for sharing your story. Sana po maraming natutunan ng ating mga kababayan. Um, yeah, that's it for this episode. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye!